Hello everyone. Today we'll be talking about how to manage hyponatremia. We are nearing the end of our lecture series in hyponatremia. So for this let's get an outline first and then we will discuss each point. Step number one is to differentiate severe from non-severe and understanding that severe hyponatremia is an emergency and treat it with hypotonic saline. Step two is find the underlying cause and treat the underlying cause. Understand that patients with polydipsia and hypovolemic hyponatremia have tendency to correct rapidly. If the hyponatremia is non-severe, use free water restriction. If this doesn't work, you can give solute in form of salt or hypotonic saline. Your correction rate has to be less than 8 milliequivalents per liter in 24 hours. Monitor sodium every 4 hours and more frequently if patient starts to increase their urine output. Rapid correction is an emergency and make sure that you understand the role of DDAVP and D5 in these patients. Severe hyponatremia is defined by the symptoms of cerebral edema. So these patients will have nausea, vomiting, headache, confusion and possibly seizures. The other principles behind treating cerebral edema have to be followed in patients with hyponatremia as well. So make sure that their head of bend is elevated. Make sure that they don't have any seizures avoid any agitations and treat underlying fevers. And most importantly, try to increase your sodium by at least 4 to 6 points as soon as possible. Raising sodium by 4 to 6 points is usually sufficient to manage brain edema acutely in patients with hyponatremia. This has been found to be safe. To raise the sodium, give them bolus of 3% saline, 150 cc over 20 minutes and repeat your sodium. Keep on bolusing them till your sodium rise by at least 4 to 6 points. The important practical point in this case is use your sodium from ABG machine because these are much faster than sending your samples to the lab. If the symptoms don't improve with increasing sodium, think about other causes of altered mental status. Many are worried about using 3% saline because they are worried by rapid correction. Understand that even in a 70 kilo man, 150 cc of 3% will increase the sodium by about 1 point. If you want to understand 3% better, please check out my lecture on how to use 3% saline in hyponatremia. Step 2 is finding the underlying cause. For this, please check out how to evaluate hyponatremic patient in my previous lecture. The links are in below. Make sure that you go through all the medication list and stop the offending medication. Stop any non-essential fluids. Correct the potassium if you are dealing with hypokalemia. If you have got hypervolemic hyponatremia, treat as heart failure or cirrhosis guidelines. If hypovolemia is present, treat them as per their hemodynamic stability. If they are unstable, give them a couple of boluses of saline or ringer lactate. If they are stable, you can use saline at a rate. Since hypovolemic hypovolemia is challenging to treat and has got few nuances, we'll talk about this in a separate lecture. Step 3 is to increase the sodium level and there are only two ways to do this. Either you do free water restriction or you give them solute. For free water restriction, it's very important that you estimate how much your patient is eating and know what the urine osmolality is. You can divide these two numbers to get a rough idea about free water restriction. If you want to know more details about how to calculate and how to understand free water restriction, please watch my earlier lecture on this topic. Overall, the fluid restriction boils down to understanding ins and outs. You have to understand that the sodium in your system will depend upon amount of food you eat, amount of incipient losses you have, and amount of urine output along with urine osmolality. So the reason why fluid restriction fails is because you're not accounting the amount of food the patient is taking, you're not monitoring the urine output and changes in urine osmolality, and you're not paying attention to incipient losses. You have to keep all these three factors together when you're calculating fluid restriction. You can check out how to calculate the fluid restriction in my previous lecture. So how do you know if your free water restriction is adequate? Well, your sodium is slowly going to rise. That is a good indicator that you're doing a good job there. However, you can check your urine sodium and potassium and if some of these is more than serum sodium, most likely your fluid restriction is inadequate and your sodium may fall. 
along with water restriction or if your water restriction fails, you can give solute in form of salt tablets or 3% saline. I have talked in details about these two, about the amount and how to use 3% in a separate lecture. Please review them. In mild hyponatremia, treat the underlying cause rather than focus on hyponatremia treatment. You must have seen multiple formulas available online and in the books. Calculating the sodium deficit and infusion rates involve taking a lot of assumption. So make sure that you understand these before applying them. All of these equations will give you only initial infusion rates and depending upon how much patient eats or makes urine or has incipient losses, the rates are going to change and make sure that you pay attention to them. If you do not know the onset of hyponatremia, always treat it as chronic. Chronic hyponatremia is defined as hyponatremia for more than 48 hours. The correction rate should be 6 to 8 millivolts per day. Try to avoid increasing it more than 8 in 24 hours. If the correction rate is too rapid, this is a medical emergency. Make sure that you stop the free water losses in urine and lower the sodium back to the target sodium that you wanted to achieve. For this, use desmopressin. Desmopressin decreases your urine output by decreasing the free water loss in the urine. Some people call it clamping of urine. Along with it, give them free water in form of 5% dextrose bolus to correct the sodium and bring it to the desired level. I have talked about how much of these to give in a separate lecture, how to correct the overcorrection in hyponatremia. Feel free to review that topic. So is there a way to know that your patient is going to correct rapidly? For this, try to figure out the underlying reason for rapid correction. Rapid correction occurs because most likely your patient's underlying etiology of hyponatremia is getting better. This usually results in a decreased ADH production, which results in decreased aquaporin molecules. So there is a less free water absorption. So you are now making more urine with a lower osmolality. So your patient will be dumping urine. So if your patient start having increased urine output and dissipate that your sodium is going to correct more rapidly, and check sodium more frequently. You can use desmopressin and D5 to your advantage. You can use different ways depending on your comfort level. But the bottom line is make sure that your correction rates are less than 8 milliequivalents per day and are uniform. Some people try to schedule DDAVP to increase urine osmolality and decrease urine production. Some other people would suggest giving them D5 to change their urine output and using DDAVP as needed. Both the methods are okay as long as your correction rates are less than 8. Few patients are at high risk of developing osmotic demyelination syndrome. They include severe hyponatremia, hypokalemia, alcoholism, liver disease, and malnutrition. For these patients, try to set a lower target of correction, usually 4 to 6 per day. If you happen to observe symptoms of ODS while you are correcting sodium, re-lower your sodium to your previous levels, give them steroids. Some studies have used minocycline and myoinositol to prevent the CPM. Usually the symptoms of osmotic demyelination occurs a week or more later. Lastly, there are other medications that you can use in hyponatremia, but we do not use them as inpatient. These are usually reserved for nephrologists to use them for chronic hyponatremia. First of them is Vaptans. These are vasopressin receptor antagonists. These medications have not shown to be any benefit in mortality than usual methods and they are expensive and they have tendency to correct your sodium very rapidly. So avoid their use while patient is in hospital. Nephrologists will usually use them as an outpatient for persistent hyponatremia after failing water restriction and solute intake. Demiclocycline and lithium are a few other drugs that nephrologists use as outpatient. There is no role for these medications for inpatient use. 
common errors in management of hyponatremia include not using hypotonic saline for severe hyponatremia, letting your sodium rise by more than 8 milliequivalents liter per day, trying to water restrict patients with depleted ACF, that is hypovolemic hyponatremia. Understand that in these patients, the initial treatment involves giving them fluid to correct their ECF status. Once their volume status is optimized, only then use water restriction. Understand that water restriction goes hand in hand with the solute intake. So make sure that you understand your patient oral intake, urine output and urine osmolality. Do not put everybody randomly on 1 liter free water restriction. Do not use isotonic saline for correcting hyponatremia from SIADH. If you see a rapid correction of sodium, treat it emergently using D5 and desmopressin. Thank you.